reminding you of city council meeting to order. If we can do roll call, please. Jerry Wonders? Here. Lisa Keel? Present. Susan Newha? Present. Robert Hires? Here. Laura LaGuire? Here. Paul Schultz? Yes. Mr. Roman? Here. Before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, you may stand, that's fine. <laughs> Before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, I have two things I'd like to uh, mention to you. In 1955, the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution petitioned Congress for the resolution to set aside September 17th through 23rd, dedicated to the observance of Constitution Week. The annual celebration is established and was signed into law by uh, President Eisenhower on August 2nd, 1956. We have some brochures or some pages up here if you would like to take one and uh, display it someplace. And uh, after, you can hand those up. When we take our break at the, uh, between the going to the work session, you're welcome to come up and get one of those. Now, if you would stand. And in honor of, not honor, September 11th, we had a tragedy in the United States. And if we could do a moment of silence before we do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have been given an agenda. Is there any additions or corrections to the agenda? Or a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We have an agenda. Number five on the agenda is public comment about any agenda items. Uh, we have several smaller things on the agenda tonight. If you'd like to make any comments about those, again, please let me know and use the microphone uh, and limit your comments to three minutes. Okay. Number six on the agenda is the presentation from the library. Hello, everybody. I am Christina LeVay Rowland. I am the lead librarian at the Montague branch of the Muskegon Area District Library. Um, do I still give my address? You can. Yeah, okay. I live at 3154 Maple Grove Road in Muskegon. A uh, few things that I want to share. One is that our story times have officially started up again. So if you have little ones in your life, please bring them to the library. We do it on Tuesdays at 11. And another one is that we are also having a program for giant board games and mini snacks. And that's going to be on the 28th. I'm very excited, but nobody has signed up yet. So please spread the word. It's a family event. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, but my main reason that I came here today is that I'm very excited to share that the library has been awarded a $25,000 improving access grant to, um, that's from the Library of Michigan, to get a self-serve laptop kiosk upstairs. It's gonna be situated between the two sets of double doors. Uh, the grant is going to cover the installation of the kiosk itself, renovations to the space, and six laptops. The laptops will be uh, equipped with cellular internet access to allow patrons to use them for things like job hunting, uh, or paying their bills online uh, from the comfort of their own homes because not everyone's schedule allows them to get to the library when we're open so this is a way for us to offer a resource to them um, on their own schedule so we're really excited about that the goal is to have it installed by the end of this year but with the holidays we think it's probably going to be more like the beginning of 2024 uh, but I do want to give a shout out to Montague City Manager Jeff because he wrote a letter of support for this project which really uh, was instrumental in helping us receive this grant. So we think this is going to be a wonderful resource and we are very excited to launch it. So, any questions? Does council have any questions? Did you say board game for the 29th? 28th. 28th. Yes, Thursday night. 
5, 5.30 p.m. Come ready to have snacks and just play a lot of really fun games. Congratulations on the grant. That Thank you. Huge. Thank you. We're really, really excited. I think it's going to be great. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number seven on the agenda is approval of consent agenda items. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda items, including the minutes, city council minutes, the communications from the wastewater, downtown development, fire, and ambulance, and the regular bills in the amount of 629-270-78 with 445-530-96 to others. Second. We have a motion and support. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Wonders? Yes. Councilwoman Newhoff? Yes. Councilwoman McGuire? Yes. Councilman Hires? Yes. Councilwoman Keel? Yes. Councilman Schultz? Yes. Mayor Loman? Yes. Number eight on the agenda. 8A, Jeff. 8A. Let me walk through kind of both 8A and 8B, and then we will uh, kind of reverse for action by council, if so desired. Um, so deer management areas, um, the first one is fairly easy. I'll talk about the individual sites in just a second. Uh, deer management area, private lands number two, the Hanson parcel located kind of northeast section of the city. This has been certified for several years, so Mr. Hanson has requested to be certified again. Um, the next, um, let me back up here. The next parcel is an expansion of the private lands deer management area, which is the one that's behind the boat storage area and adjacent to the bike trail. Um, in previous years, we have allowed private landowners to add their acreage to that six acres to allow for hunting on their property. So it's not hunting on the, on the public parcel, but the private parcel. So in this um, slide here, the orange was a parcel of private lands that was added a couple years ago. They are not participating anymore. Um, this evening is the blue parcel being added to the public lands, which would then act as the buffer area around that private lands parcel. So if we look at the individual parcels themselves, this is deer management area number two, Hanson's uh, parcel. So this is business route 31 going up north, um, Walsh Road that takes off from there, and Bell's Warehouse. So it is behind those properties. Uh, used to be, it was certified as the Hunt Parcel a couple years ago. So um, then it was purchased by Hanson. It was certified by a council last year under Hanson, and it, so it will be again this year. The Barn Card Parcel, I did a couple things here. So the smaller map is the parcel that's currently certified. So this is that private lands deer management area with the two hunting zones. In order to add the barn card parcel onto that, it expands that uh, public lands area, but only allows hunting on the private lands section away from the house and away from the bike trail. So there is uh, about 75 to 100 yards from the bike trail itself to the back edge of this parcel. Um, and again, it's only private land, so individuals that hunt that property have to be certified by the landowner as well. Um, Can you show me where the farmer's market is on that? Uh, farmer's market is down here. Oh, thank you. So this is Water Street going down. You turn between the two storage buildings coming down ramp road, here's the fish cleaning station, boat launch, right in that area. Associated with those parcels that the council approves are three hunting permit applications, uh, one from John Hansen and then Darcy Belzar for hunting the Hansen parcel, and then David Redman for the barn cart parcel. So again, any private lands hunting if the council approves that parcel being certified, in order for an applicant to come before you, the landowner has to agree that they can hunt on that property as well. So it's not, um, council doesn't get open approval for anybody in the public to hunt that parcel of a private land, so landowner still has the ability to deny or accept hunters. Um, <coughs> 
So if council approves, I would recommend doing the deer management area separate from the hunters. So general business A and then general business item B would be to um, the permit applications. And again, you have to name the actual applicants for approval. I'll make a motion to approve the DMAs on the public and private land. Second. Is there any discussion or questions? <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilwoman Wonders? Yes. Councilwoman McGuire? Yes. Councilman Hires? Yes. Councilwoman Newhoff? No. Councilman Schultz? No. Councilwoman Keel? Yes. Mayor Yes. 8B. I make a motion that we approve the deer hunting applications for John Franklin Hansen, Darcy Belazar, and David Redmond. Support. Any discussion or questions? Roll call, please. Councilwoman McGuire? Yes. Councilwoman Keel? Yes. Councilman Schultz? No. Councilwoman Wonders? Yes. Councilman Hires? Yes. Councilwoman Newhoff? No. Mayor Lowman? Yes. Number 8C, Jeff. Let's see, uh, NYFC, so Montague Youth Football and Cheer Proposal, Montague Area uh, Public Schools. Uh, we do have Mr. Moore with us this evening, but just a quick introduction. The reason this is before the City Council. So according to state law, um, there are those periods where anybody can fire or utilize fireworks within any municipality in any area kind of surrounding those federal holidays. Any other fireworks that happen within a municipal boundary has to be approved by that municipality because uh, otherwise it would not only be in violation of the state law, but they would also be in violation of local ordinance as far as noise control um, and general fireworks dispersion. Um, so this approval is coming before the council because even though the school holds all the liability and the fireworks company holds the liability, um, because it's on their facility, it still has to be approved at the council level because it's happening within our municipal boundary. Uh, included in your packet this evening is the original fireworks proposal presented by Mr. Moore, as well as materials put together by Pyrotechnico. That is the same company that performed the July 4th fireworks. And then a uh, display kind of PowerPoint presentation that I printed out for you that shows kind of the safety protocols <coughs> that they have discussed and would implement. Um, so again, this is for city approval just to allow fireworks to happen within the boundary. It does not matter that it happens within um, the school itself, whether it was a school or a private landowner, whatever would still need council approval because it's a fireworks display outside of that state law for everybody to um, have fireworks. So Jason, I don't know if you want to have a couple minutes of comments there, kind of talk through process, and then if council members have questions, that would be great. Esteemed colleagues of the council, I appreciate your time. Uh, a little bit of introduction about myself. My name is Jason Moore, uh, recently retired from Consumers Energy, a supervisor of electric operations uh, for the Lakeshore here. And um, for the past three years, I've been putting on parties for the after season for the Montague Youth Football and Cheer. Um, I had the privilege of serving with Montague Youth Football and Cheer committee and board up until the past week or so where I had to uh, resign my commission as vice president with Doug Boardwell in order to make sure that this would be a possibility and have the insurance coverage for the event. The event that we're looking at doing is by no means anything super spectacular like what happened on the 4th of July. I was on my boat right here in the lake watching and that was a really good show. Uh, the price that we are paying for, or that I am paying, for these fireworks displays is mainly due to the safety aspect of it. These are close proximity fireworks, specially made, 
just for being in close proximity to it. Um, that's where the pricing comes in at. Um, up until, I believe, last night, the board and I were working very diligently with Mr. Jeff Johnson, and I've spoken with Mr. Rock several times about trying to get this moved forward. So um, is there any questions as far as the process that I've presented in the packet for you? I have a question about dates. Is this a one-time deal or it would be like- for Well, I, I spoke with Jeff Johnson about that. We were looking at doing it for homecoming, but we did not have the lead time through Power Technico and the approval of the city council here to get it done for this Saturday to come up. Um, this is a one-time issue as kind of a litmus test to see how the community responds. I know football's really big here in Montague. My daughter plays on the eighth grade team under Coach Manny, who's a really great coach. Um, I was also a coach in the NYFC, but had to step down because of medical issues. Uh, my son played, my oldest son plays for NYFC, and my youngest son will soon be coming up to play in NYFC football. So this is something that I was looking at doing through the school and the board and through the city council for many years to come, as long as it goes over well with the community at large. So this is for high school events or for youth events? Okay. This, this initial one would be just for a youth event. Like I said, as a litmus test to see how it would go. Um, so I have now, spoken, ma'am. Because you mentioned homecoming. Well, no, not homecoming this year. We didn't have enough time to get that lined up. Uh, pyrotechnicos, technicians, and pyrotechnic experts don't have enough time to get it done. So this is something that we would definitely, I would definitely be looking forward to doing for homecoming or the entire football program and student athletes as a body together in the years to come because I want to bring excitement back to Montague football. I mean the, the player athletes deserve the recognition for all their hard work that they do. So has this been through the school board as well for approval it's since been, it's going to be on the football field? This will be out on the football field. I've spoken with Jay Mulder. And Mr. Johnson, I believe that it has gone through the school board and the appropriate process is there to move forward, but they are all on board with it. Is there no concern with the insurance issues or anything from their standpoint? Uh, no, ma'am. At this point, no. Pyrotechnico is providing at least a $10 million insurance coverage policy for my esteemed members here at the council and the other major stakeholder, Montague Area Public Schools, to make sure all the fans, spectators, and players are adequately covered. And looking at the map, it's at the far end of the field, basically up against the wooded lot that is behind it, correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. It is well outside of the easement of uh, consumers and ITC's transmission power lines, stays within inside the boundaries of the property here uh, at the school, so. Thank you. A couple questions. Did you look into at all doing a light show instead of fireworks? I did a laser light show at my house last year and a giant Madden tournament for the players last year. I did look into doing laser light shows and cryogenic smokes and stuff like that, but that wasn't going to be able to happen in time either. You know, I think that fireworks are, are going to be a thing of the past pretty soon. They are a disaster in the environment, which we're trying to be really mindful of. They are horrible for wildlife. The noise is deafening and terrifying. And shelters, you may know, animal shelters get loaded um, every year around the 4th of July from animals that break out of windows and off leashes and go through doors. <clears throat> and then there's the whole safety factor for which you have to have so much liability insurance. So um, my hope is that if you decide to do something again next year, that you look at into laser light. I also think it's so cool for the students because it's really cutting edge. Yeah, and, that's, and that is stuff. something that we could look into next year is doing a laser light show, strobe lights with the cryogenic smoke for the team entrances and stuff like that. Yeah. I, did, I, I did look at just the pyrotechnic towers, you know, where they just shoot flames instead of the small fireworks that we're planning on using. The, the ones that we are looking at using only shoot up 50 feet and they're not necessarily very loud. They are designed just for close proximity to make sure that all the bases are covered and all the participants are safe. So, 
What would the length of the show be or the entrance or roughly? That, that all depends on exactly how we get it lined out. Right now we have it lined out using just the 5th, 6th Montague youth team, both blue and silver. Yeah. Um, it would be a quick little run through in about 10 seconds. Okay, so it's and not like a, it's not like a ten minute show. It's no, more just a, no. It's, here comes the team type. It's, of yeah, it's explosion. just a here comes the team and confetti okay. cannons just. Okay, I think that might be some of, of yeah, the no, explanation that's yeah. missing. Yeah, no, it's definitely okay. not going to be anything extended more than ten seconds. Kind of like what you see on the NFL when they come running out. Exactly, the time, right? exactly okay. it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm glad you clarified. Okay, got it. You mentioned that you've had some problems or whatever up to this point. To Anything that you haven't mentioned already? Um, there's uh, some issues with uh, liability coverage for NYFC. Uh, we were working on that. I stepped down to make sure that this could be a possibility for the students and the players. Um, I know that the existing board is working very diligently to try and remedy those issues. But So it's still, even after we okay this, there's still some other things that have to happen? Um, at this point, um, if the NYFC committee and board cannot or will not do it, I've already spoken with Jeff Johnson about an alternative plan to bring in all the high school students leading the youth groups through the pyro just to be on the safe side and get it done for the kids to make sure that they're recognized. Other questions? Okay, thank you. I have several questions. Um, is there a, a, a safety plan, a written safety plan uh, for this, for what you're planning on doing? I have the process written down in through the PowerPoint that uh, Jeff was kind enough to print out for us. Um, as far as a fully detailed plan, I do have that at the house and I can supply it to Jeff or to the board and the council as requested. Have you uh, talked at all to the Fire Chief uh, Anderson about this? I have not spoken to Fire Chief Anderson. I was going to approach uh, Drake Rossler and Dennis Rossler and the rest of them and make that commitment to them and get the commitment from them here after I received uh, council approval. And have you talked to the police chief about this at all? No, sir. This was all dependent upon the approval of the city council before I started asking for city resources. Okay, um, have we talked to any of the neighbors around the school um, about what, what they think about shooting off fireworks on Saturday um, and the smoke and the noise that will come with it that we talked I have, to them about? I have not spoken with the surrounding neighborhoods. On the very front page it was put out to for the city to put it out and if there was any complaints or any issues then that through through the communication of the city and the school itself putting out the notifications that there could be a enjoyable Saturday to see whether or not and that's kind of where the litmus test is. Okay. Um, a couple other issues that I'd like to make sure we clarify. Uh, number one, it's my understanding that there, the Montague School Board does not approve this that it has not been taken to the Montague School Board for approval. So I'd like to clarify that and make sure that we put that out here. Unless they had a meeting last night that I'm unaware of. And I'm unaware of that as well. Uh, we'll speak with Jeff Johnson again tomorrow right. morning. Also, you mentioned the liability issues. It's my understanding that the uh, Montague Youth Football Group voted last night to not approve this to uh, take place during their event because of liability issues. Uh, yes. There were questions about insurance liability that haven't been ironed out. Well, it's it's not necessarily an insurance ability on the main stakeholders, the city and the school. Um, the Montague Youth Program has had an issue to where they've lost their standing with the state and the IRS as an organization and they cannot be insured. Okay. <coughs> Yes, um, I get. I have some real concerns about this this situation. We've got a lot of things going on here that we're talking for people who aren't in the room, and um, I guess I'll wait and make a motion a little bit. Um, I just 
I don't see how we could proceed with this um, without answering some more of these questions about liability and so on. Um, if, the, if the youth football program has voted not to approve this, not to sanction this, um, there's got to be a reason for it. And my understanding, I was told that it was because there was an issue with liability insurance. Um, I'm also real concerned that we haven't talked to our fire chief about safety. Um, this is also, uh, the football field is uh, close to a, a, a residential area uh, subdivision, uh, the Pauling Street Towns and Court subdivision. Um, there's certain times of the year where we have to allow fireworks. Um, I, I think that we owe it to those people to have an opportunity to speak on whether they want fireworks shot off at other times during the year than are legal according to law. <coughs> um, I, I, the other thing is that I, it, I, I kind of feel like this is being pushed at us rather quickly. It's my understanding that this project started about three months ago. About four. Yeah. About four months ago. Yes. Okay. I think that someone should have came to the city three, four months ago so that we would have had an opportunity, Jeff would have had an opportunity maybe to go up and talk to some people up in the area up there and see what they think about it. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that you want to do next week or the week after. And, uh, you know, there's, we don't have another meeting before then. So we're, we're, we're kind of, Point, kind of being called upon to act rather quickly on this, and, and I don't think it's something that we should be act, acting quickly on. Well, that's that's understandable. Um, it, as far as your concerns for the fire and the police, those permits and stuff will be submitted by Pyrotechnico and stuff like that uh, later this week. So, as far as getting coverage for those, we've got that covered. It's just a matter of getting the paperwork in and approved. Um, for communicating with the citizens, I can fully understand that. I, I think I echo your concern. I don't want, I mean, the police and the fire should be involved from the beginning, mm -hmm. not after we approve it. I would like to know how they feel about it first. And uh, I see us really as a final approval process. Um, and I think you'd find people here pretty amenable if all of the rest of the players are lined up and, and in favor of it, namely police and fire and namely the neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Other comments or questions? I have a follow-up comment. I think you said the maximum 50 feet in the air, but on the second page it says, on average shells will reach 100 feet of elevation for every inch in shell diameter. <clears throat> Example, two inch shells will reach approximately 200 feet. And I don't know anything about fireworks, but that's not 50 feet. Yeah, no, that's that's the that's issue. Inside. We're paying well, for specific fireworks that only do this. These are fireworks that are done inside stadiums for rock concerts and NFL and games the and everything else. 50 feet and 200 feet. These are only supposed to be 50 feet. Yeah. I think they're just listing out the different sizes yeah, that are available. Yeah, they're just listing out inventory. And this isn't a show. It's just a poof. It's just a ten poof, shot. ten shot, poof, and um, that's not. I'm, I'm probably one of the biggest Mountain View football fans we have on the board, right? Love the team, love to support them. Um, I think I would like to understand a little bit more about um, the youth league being <coughs> against it. I don't know. I know you want to get this through it as soon as possible. Does it bring us to a meeting? in a couple of weeks. I know we kind of said we would pull them if we need them. If they got all of the information that we had requested, would we get together to vote on it at that point? Or can we approve it contingent on this and this and this and this? So, I mean... I definitely feel the school board should have yeah. input. It's on their property. Yeah, that's and what I mean. Something was put in the paper board, the fire, for the neighbors. The mm -hmm. So they had an opportunity to respond whether they did or not, I don't know. But that happens kind of been covered. So it was in the paper? I don't yeah, know. that's what he mm -hmm. said. Oh, no, it says that we will be putting out 
Oh, yeah. Unknown. Uh, yes, yeah, so we can advance of the event. Yeah. Okay. And then we would know. Okay. And this is something that we can do later in the month of October after the next council meeting as well. So we do have a little bit of time. We were just looking. So. And what is that date? October 7th. October 7th. So we don't have time. Mm -hmm. Even if we had another meeting, we don't have and this is something like last year's football party had to be put off for several weeks into November because of extenuating circumstances and conflicting schedules. So this is something that can be put off for several weeks until all the requirements and necessary documents and stuff for the city council have been prepared. I'm sorry, but I would like to table this until the other groups that are involved in approving this have been notified and waiting on please fire neighbors um, school board school board yeah is that what okay? we take a motion or can we just can choose <coughs> i'm not agreeing jeff do we need a motion to table this yes you would need a motion okay. i move that we table this to our next meeting, um, <coughs> at which point we'd like more information. Absolutely. Um, if I can have the required information uh, that had been requested previously that I was not given, I will gladly get you that information. Support. Okay. I have a motion to table this until the next meeting and support. Is there any further discussion? I don't know if there's any, I mean, I know fireworks are basically things that explode and go up in the air, right? But when we say firework proposal, the first thing people think of are in the sky, big fireworks. So I don't mm -hmm. know if there's a, a better description yeah. that you could use that people would understand. Pyrotechnic display. Maybe it, that well, would be better. I was going to put it down, but, but I know that the I word I think when, you, when we say fireworks, everybody's expecting this big in the yeah. sky show, and that's not yeah. what we're talking about here. No. So. Um, if there's anything that might just help. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. Do we have a, a list of requirements that we should have for the next meeting? Police, fire, and school board? Approval? I'm sorry, what did you Neighbors? say? The, the list Neighbors. of things yeah. that we want approval. Um, fire Chief Ron Anderson, Police Chief, School Board. Written safety plan. Input from the neighbors. Okay. Is yeah, there a specific like radius that the city would require for contact with the customer citizens of Montague? These are pretty small fireworks. Yeah, you yeah. don't. You, your yeah. houses are talking. way under yeah, the side of the yeah. 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 yeah, these are class three, nowhere right. near a like class yeah. four yeah. that was used out here. Thing. I think we keep seeing in our mind going, phew, phew, phew. Yeah, and it's. it's in the, in the original PowerPoint proposal that I submitted with the cover letter to get this put on the agenda for today, it shows videos of the actual small little fireworks that go off. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just had the printout. That we have to publish it during that time. No, I, my question to Jeff was I just wanted to make sure that under the change in the law a couple years ago, I didn't know if we had to publish publish something um, I, I love football I love Montague football so do I but um, we got a lot of other things that we got to look out for here no I fully understand that that's why I went with the best in the business with Pyrotechnico and the same way the city views it as well I believe so we have a motion on the floor to uh, table this until the next meeting and hopefully you can get some information back before that is there any other discussion? Or roll call, please. Councilwoman Newhoff? Yes. Councilwoman Keel? Yes. Councilwoman Wonders? Yes. Councilwoman McGuire? Yes. Councilman Schultz? Yes. Councilman Hires? No. Mayor Loman? Yes. So, Jason, do you know what we need? Um, I would appreciate a list from the council. Okay. Jeff, is there if something? Yep. You can provide. So right now I have um, some information from the chief of police, uh, the fire chief, school board, written safety plan, and neighbors. And I believe Mr. Moore did ask for a radius that council would like to see that notification. 
500 feet, 1,000 feet? I don't know. Yeah, I it, don't know if that even is yeah, really necessary knowing necessary. where the housing I don't development think the fireworks is. would be any louder than the crowd. No. 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 The crowd will be much louder. Very small fireworks. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's not a display. I don't think it's really necessary. Can we get clarity on the, the insurance issue also? And the plan. I believe I submitted the certificate of insurance with the email earlier. Strong. Yes, I think he's talking about with the youth, my uh, youth football. Oh. And, and it's my understanding, and you can clarify, and also with um, liability insurance. So if an organization cannot get liability insurance for whatever reason, it's to protect that for that organization, the individuals that service on that board. The same as if the city could not get liability insurance for fireworks. It's not to protect the citizens or the public, it's to protect this board. So the fact that the youth, um, mind you, youth can't get insurance doesn't necessarily affect the liability from the fireworks because that falls on the school and the fireworks company. So it's just the protection of that board themselves of why they can't get any liability insurance. But my understanding of how, why and how, I uh, can get some clarification. Yes, and you've hit it correctly. And inside the PowerPoint, I've made sure to mitigate any exposure to NYFC by recruiting volunteers from the audience, parents that I know that would do it willingly, and have Montague Youth Football and Cheer coaches and representatives out at midfield or on the sidelines for the, the team to run to. That way they're not exposed to any form of liability. Well, I think Jeff is going to get you a list, Jason. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. I greatly appreciate the council's time, Mr. Wong. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Number nine on the agenda is public comment. This is open public comment. Again, please limit your comments to three minutes. Use the microphone. <coughs> Cheryl Loman, 8725 Me. I would like to thank and commend the city for providing the bike racks, bikes, and the helmets for the tourists who come to our city to use and explore our community. And so again, I thank you for your forward thinking and hope that it still stays available through the pumpkin fest. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Moving on to number 10, <coughs> city manager report, yeah? Okay, a few items this evening. Uh, I think council members have received the announcement for the ribbon cutting for the Butter Belt Creek Nature Trail. So that will happen Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, so this is funding that was received through the DDA to put in that access trail. Sounds like a couple of council members have already done a loop or so around that trail. So that will be the official ribbon cutting. Um, there was something in the paper this last weekend, and then we put something on our city Facebook site as well. Uh, and I think I put in front of you this evening, White Lake Community Library is hosting a Good Neighbor Day dinner, Thursday, September 28th. So there's invitations both for council members, so elected uh, officials, as well as the general public. Um, so those are being circulated as well. At the upcoming meeting in October, we will talk through at the work session uh, early voting site agreement with the county for election services. We did talk about this briefly when we were in that budget process uh, with that early voting. So having a site just at Montague or can you do a combined site? So the county is working on this agreement so it would be a combined site. Obviously significant cost savings for the city. Um, county commissioners talked about it at their last meeting. It sounds like they will vote on it in the next couple weeks here. So once they approve it, then it will go out to local municipalities. So it is not all municipalities because some still want to do it on their own. Um, but again, significant cost savings for you. That will be distributed for the work session at the next meeting. Um, included in your packet was the city manager performance evaluation. So a reminder to turn that in on or before the next meeting. 
um, to Mayor Lohman or Clerk Markley. Um, Mayor Lohman will then combine those and then the in-person review will happen in November. Uh, Mayor Lohman has reminded me twice and I will get it out is to send out an electronic, electronic version of that so that you can do that electronically so it's not all by hand. So that will go out. Um, Councilwoman LaGuire had asked a quick update on the boat launch and Maple Grove site. So those are currently at the engineering stage. Still, engineering plans have been finalized. It's going through permit process, so they need to finalize permits to submit those to the state. Um, sounds like we still will move forward with the fish cleaning station upgrades late fall, early winter. Um, the second part of that, like the boardwalk, that's all permit stuff. That might take a while. Uh, Maple Grove, Maple Beach, same thing. It's kind of going through that permit process. We do have the funds within our current budget, so once we get that permit, then we can kind of get bids and kind of work through that schedule. So, has it been all the engineering hold up? Yes. It's been yep. So a lot of it is not only the engineering part of it, but then that permit stage that it needs to go through. Um, other items, historic building fundraiser. I think everybody received the flyer. There is significant interest in helping out with this. Did get some matching funds for those donations. Um, so maybe at the next meeting, because it is just starting, I'll give an update where we are with that. Um, the hurdle that we're trying to work through with the, uh, the fundraiser is getting it electronic. Because as a municipality, we're not a traditional nonprofit or an individual. So things like even setting up a PayPal account or a GoFundMe page are not super easy to do. So we're working through those so we can do some electronic donations. Um, Councilman Hires and I will be, after I get back from North Carolina, will be working on priming and painting the outside of that structure and um, get that taken care of for this next year. Um, a couple other items happening within the downtown. Um, Department of Public Works, through a request from the Downtown Development Authority, within public parking lots have started stenciling public parking locations. So with this design, the weather vane, and it's hard to see in this, but it says public parking. Um, so those are in all the public parking lots. We didn't get all of the spots because some of them had cars parked in there, um, but we're starting to get through those throughout the city, which will help as well as some of the signage that's going up. Um, and then some of you may have noticed the informational kiosk that the DDA sponsored. So first one is located at the corner of Dowling and Ferry Street. Um, the next one will go down at the Artisan Market and then possible future down at the trailhead um, behind the bathrooms there where there's the old DNR site. Uh, the intent of these kiosks is they're three-sided, so with each kiosk they're the same kind of three messages. One might be current events, one might be a map of the city, uh, and then the other one maybe ongoing activities within the city. So the current events would be for Chamber of Commerce, school, you know, kind of continually updated. So um, I think that was yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions council members have. Any questions for Jeff? I have one question. Um, last meeting, I asked about the Ferry Street project there in the building, and you said you had updated um, pictures, drawings, yes. but we didn't get anything, so can we get them between like now and the next meeting or something? Yep, okay. that was my fault, sorry. Any other questions for Jeff? I have one. Is there a reason that if um, it's a, there's a problem us setting up this uh, GoFundMe page or whatever, why couldn't the uh, historical group um, take that on? Act, kind of act as the fiduciary? Yeah. They, they could. I can ask them. Be happy to. I think somebody just threw something at me. But. <laughs> Sorry, Cheryl. Actually, I had an email today from one of our board members who asked if we could make a donation, so I wouldn't be out of line. 
Any other questions for Jeff? Number 11 on the agenda is message from uh, communication from myself and council members, Jerry. All right. All set. Uh, All set. Yes, I want to echo the trail. It's gorgeous. I got a call from somebody completely unsolicited who said, boy, have you seen the trail? And I had not. It's wonderful. So I hope if you can't go to the ribbon cutting, just go take a walk. It, it is amazing. Um, kiosks, I think, are so cool. And they mirror really nicely all the public art that we have now around the city. They fit in really beautifully. They're so much more than just a kiosk. I like them. Nice job. Oh. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. I don't have anything. If we could have a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 We will have a three-minute break and then go into our uh, work session. Remember, there are some flyers up here if you would like them to take with you. But I'd like at least to consider starting it so that we can begin to address really seriously the big problem here, which is people opening up the door and letting their cats out and dogs not, cats not being neutered. So, I would be happy to do some research to see what other communities have done to try to get it addressed from the standpoint of working with cat owners. Does that fall to the county level, or is it truly individual city levels? It's not a county law. That's why I would look at other... The licensing is it? Dog licensing is county. Yeah, so I guess that's what I meant. Wouldn't cat fall under the same if it were to go that way? It's uh, even the dog law is state law, and the county oh, state has law. decided okay. to administer it. As a local municipality, you can administer your own programs, um, right. but it's otherwise most counties. We can what would you say? Ninety percent of the counties throughout Michigan do their mm -hmm. dog licensing, but you can always choose to do it yourself as a home rule city. It just has come back to me over and over and over again this last year and a half of addressing feral cat problems that the problems are the people and what they don't do and and as a result what's happening out there. And, and I know it's a long process and I know it's hard to police and it's hard to monitor but I, I keep hoping that if we help people understand that we're serious about this and if we do more education about what the repercussion of their actions is that we will slowly make some progress in um, having people take the lives of cats seriously like we do now dogs. Any other discussion? Thank you, Sue. Any other discussion on this section? Moving on to the next section, Jim. Okay. Pedestrian and bicycle traffic. So this is a kind of a safety item. We've had a couple of people inquire. In fact, when we worked on the bicycle rule before, I think when we were talking about expanding that the three feet to five feet. We talked about bicycles within the downtown area. Um, looked at several municipalities. It's kind of a mixed bag. Some of them allow them under certain conditions. If you do not allow them, you actually have to have some posting requirements. Um, I don't know if you've been up to Pentwater recently, but they actually have it stenciled on the sidewalk at every crosswalk that bicycles, skateboards, and Scooters maybe not allowed on the sidewalks within the downtown. Um, I know there are some conflicts when the sidewalk is busy, um, not only downtown but also in other areas of the city. So the thought was you start kind of breaking those apart a little bit as far as the downtown area and then also talk about what those exceptions are. So pedestrians and bicycles may utilize the sidewalk for travel throughout the city with the exception of bicyclists using sidewalks downtown when pedestrians are present. Bicyclists shall not travel on sidewalks on Ferry Street from Hunt to Church. 
So Perry Street being out in front of City Hall here. Hunt is up by Tri-County. Church Street is down by Farmer's Market, so that would be the expanse on Ferry. On Dowling Street, so from Old Channel Trail, where that comes down to Water Street, so basically to the light. So our main business district. And Spring Street from Ferry Street to Water Street, so Spring Street being right out here. So from Ferry, the corner here, down to Water Street, when pedestrians are the present. Um, so again, downtown area. If we kind of move then to the next part, so if a bicyclist is passing a pedestrian on a sidewalk, whether overtaking and traveling in the same direction or passing in the opposite direction, the bicyclist shall yield to pedestrians. Uh, so this also mimics some language in state law um, as far as yielding to pedestrians because Bicyclists, depending on where they're traveling, are considered a vehicle. Um, so that's why, like, if a bicyclist is walking their bike across the crosswalk, it's different than the bicyclist riding their bike across the crosswalk. Um, yielding to pedestrians shall include either stopping the bicycle to allow for passage of pedestrians, slowing and moving to the opposite side of the sidewalk while safely passing, or exiting the sidewalk while stopping or slowing down to allow for safe passage. When a bicyclist is overtaking a pedestrian from behind and traveling in the same direction, the cyclist shall verbally or audibly warn the pedestrian that cyclist is approaching. So coming up from behind, there has to be some sort of signal. The last component of this ordinance is because there's been some conflicts by all of the new motorized um, bikes and skateboards and all that. All electric motorized bicycles, electric motorized scooters, skateboards, or similar equipment may travel on sidewalks throughout the city, but shall completely stop and halt operation to allow pedestrians to pass. So this is largely coming about as you get above, I think they're called EV1, which are the just pedal assist. Once you get to the ones that have throttle, it can get up to 25 miles an hour in some cases. So you can imagine some conflicts of a bicycle traveling 25 miles an hour down the sidewalk coming up against a pedestrian. They obviously should not have uh, right away compared to a pedestrian. Questions, comments, concerns? I have a question. Yeah. Um, one, how do, how do people know this? How are people going to know this? And another thing is, you got the free bike things that right where the right where you're not supposed to ride, and a lot of them bikes are little kid bikes. They're not for big people, and so you got them sitting right there, but you can't ride them on the sidewalk. So how are people going to know this? Because if they're kids, and like a parent's walking around, and they're, you know, the kid wants to take one of these free bikes for a ride, where do you think they're going to go? They're going to go on the sidewalk. They're going to go on the road with their kids. So I'm just curious how you're going to communicate this, um, being. We're an enabler because we have the bike sitting right there. I mean, I think it's a good thing to have a bike sitting right there. But um, I can just see parents with little kids going, oh, yeah, you do. We'll walk down the sidewalk and you ride your bike, you know. But you can't. But how do they know that? Right. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but it seems they only can't use them when pedestrians are present, right? right? Yeah, but, well, yeah, but is that one downtown, pedestrian or is yeah, that 10? Right. It's right downtown on Ferry Street, and Who's that's, that's where the most pedestrians are. I can see the, the real conflict being the kids who are probably already are not reading the signs. Well, even right. the parents don't read the signs. Exactly. So I see. They're just going to grab a bike and ride down the street. Right, because up. who's going to, I mean, I wouldn't know that. I mean, unless you have a, especially people from out of town, I mean. Yeah, like it defines sections that you can't ride. Yeah, so, and right. they're going to go ferry to water to spray. Them. But they have yeah. bikes sitting right here. We must be able to ride them on the sidewalk. You know, to me, it's it's confusing. It's. I just was curious. What, yeah. You know, so we could take it. that exception out of yeah. there and just have the general rules of if there's a conflict of pedestrians. And even in that scenario, just like so many laws, unless there's a conflict, yeah, then it's really more of an education by the police department of saying. Well, you shouldn't be riding down the sidewalk when there's somebody walking. Yeah. First thing I'd say, well, how would I have known that? Right. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's not like you were trying to do something bad, but how do you know what you don't know? So I just, it just came to mind. Yes. It was crazy. So these can be posted at a bike 
pick up skimping. They can? Yeah, I think yeah. that's a great idea. And it's um, <laughs> it would be really nice if these went home with every student in school. I don't even think it's the, the people here. Um, I'm thinking more of the summer people who come here and they're going, oh look, they have free bikes you can use there. You guys ride a bike, we'll walk down the sidewalk, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know if that's gonna solve the problem because um, it's really tourists, I think, that would be probably, because I th I, you know, a lot of the other people have their own bikes and stuff. But I don't know, I just, it just popped into my mind. I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, bikes right where you can't ride them. Just a comment. What are we, what, I mean, somebody steps out of a store, so we're expecting everybody to hop off their bicycles immediately, immediately right? I mean, there's a pedestrian person, right? Uh, I was kind of amazed wandering around at the music thing this summer, um, how rude I don't want to say bicycle people are, but uh, how rude some people on bicycles can be, uh, uh, especially in the stretch between the campground and uh, the other side of the river um, where we had the groups along there that were right along the path, and you had people stopping to listen to music and, and watch things, and um, several times I heard people kind of comments that can end up with fist fights or, you know, get out of the way, um, you know, we're trying to get through on our bikes, these kind of things. And I, um, I don't know, I just, I have concerns that we're, we're making the, the thing more confusing than it needs to be. Um, maybe keeping it simpler and just, um, saying something to the effect of uh, in the downtown area you can't ride your, your bikes on the sidewalks. I mean, um, I just, and I haven't seen enough of it between Lipka's Corner and between the corner of City Hall here to see if it is a problem, but it just seems like it. it and the other thing that, why would we want to allow electric bicycles scooters and skateboards on the sidewalks. Um, has anybody not seen some of the kids on these electric skateboards and, and how they can't stop when they need to stop? And I mean, it, it seems like we're just, I don't, I don't know why anybody with an electric bicycle would want to be on the sidewalk downtown. Yeah. And they're all our, um, I just, I had somebody say to me the other day when I was talking to him about this, they said, well, you know, people need to be able to teach their kids how to ride a bike. And they need to be able to use the sidewalk in front of their house. Well, we took our kids up to the school parking lot and taught them how to ride their bikes. Um, I don't, I don't know, I think we're, some of this is, we're complicating things too much. And, I don't think it's that complicated. The pedestrians have the right away at the start. Yeah, I think but it, yeah. it was okay. You and I know that, yeah. Bob. Right. But I know, I know exactly what you Fill this room full of people, and like seventy-five percent of them don't know that. Well, in some cases, it's like know. it's like Let's face they should it, be stopping when they're people are in the crosswalk. Do whatever they're going to do. Anyway. I mean, how many times have you come down the hill and see the lights on, and yeah. people are trying to cross with the lights on, and yeah. cars are going through? They don't pay attention and it's it's been a law right. longer than you and I've been alive. Right. You know, it's been, I don't know. I, I I would hope that we look at this a little bit more and <coughs> the old kick it to subcommittee oh, and study it. <coughs> Any other comments? I do think simpler is better. Yeah. I, I mean yeah. if you if you're gonna have no bikes on the sidewalks downtown and just make it all downtown. So it's a simple fact that you need to walk your bike around downtown. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it should be mm -hmm. when you're downtown. Would we have to post signs for that? There's already so many signs. Well, so there's one concern with saying that is how do you define downtown? The only legal definition of downtown is according to zoning or according to the DDA. 
So unless that was part of the idea with defining streets, is that kind of describes the downtown because really if somebody's riding on the sidewalk all the way out to Wesco, they're in the downtown. And so they would be in violation if they can't ride in downtown. So you've got to have to put your arms around it somehow. Somebody in Tentwater had the right idea with posting it on the sidewalk. <laughs> I'd like to say this is a great argument for bike lanes on roads. Well, it's great if we have it. Point made. Yeah. And maybe we will with the new, when this gets done. That won't solve downtown problems. I, I do think, um, Paul, your language saying, um, and Jeff, you said this too, pedestrians have the right of way. They need to be set up front. And maybe maybe we start this out with that and then whatever else you choose to include filters down from that but emphasize that because that if there is sidewalks um, down there you don't want people in the road and they got to travel so they have to be on the sidewalks if you have a bike I mean you don't want little kids in the road on a bike down there because the traffic goes so you on the bike path yeah but if you're only going down there you're going to, I mean if you're going from the library down to Wesco or something like that that's why it's short term then you aren't you don't want to go you know so you there does have to be some parameters I think on it talking you know but um, yeah it's I, I just see a lot of confusion here <laughs> Well, and issues too. I mean, yeah. people aren't going to want to walk downtown and shop if they're going to get run over by bicycles. So it definitely needs to be monitored and controlled. So we want our storefronts to actually have business. So mm -hmm. just, we definitely need a way to deal with it. So if I'm hearing correctly, the items that were on the first page that open fires and the veterinary care we're pretty settled on, but uh, this one here needs some more work. Yeah. That's where we're heading, and I would guess that Jeff would uh, accept any kind of comments. I heard on that, and maybe bring this one back to another work session. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. All right. Would it? Would the downtown development authority weigh in? Then I mean, would they have any ideas of any suggestions or? Oh, they probably would. I mean, why don't we get their take on it too? Let's not just keep it to us because yeah. they have a big stake in this. Um, so let let's hear what they say too. I want more opinions. Okay. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. We've added uh, the consumer energy resolution, Jeff. Yeah. So since we're talking about ordinances, <laughs> this is actually been working on this for quite a while so this is simply a street light uh, resolution so street light update so consumers energy contract it's a very simple one um, because it's related to actual city ordinance so 62-4 within our streets and alleys which is utility poles so city shall provide street lighting at the intersection of all improved streets and throughout the downtown area Etc. New street shall be of the high, new street light shall be of the highest efficiency available and have underground wire servicing the light poles unless an existing pole is in the immediate area upon which a street light can be mounted. And then lastly, all lights shall be pole mounted cobra lights. So interestingly, uh, Dowling Street as you're going up the hill, kind of that little S curve that we have, going in that last section as you cross. Logan Street, so not only is there not a light on that curve, which our ordinance also talks about, but there's not a light at the intersection. So as we kind of look at these street light surveys, this was designated as one location needing a street light. Red X marks where there is a street light pole. So since the city shall provide street lighting at intersections, um, would be a cobra light coming off of this light post over top of the intersection itself. When you're working with street lights with consumers energy, it is through resolution by the governing body. So that's included in your packet. 
So all of for the cost of $100, they put a new Cobra light at that intersection. So um, so again, Dowling Street heading west towards the lake. Logan Street, this is kind of one of those first streets that cuts back by the school. So no street light currently located there. Um, referencing our 62-4. So again, work section, not an action item, um, would come before the council at the next meeting. Um, I think I've included everything in there. I have the uh, final contract with here, but it's basically a signature page, that design that's shown in your packet. Um, and then the resolution itself. So, questions on that? Questions or comments? Okay. Didn't think so, Jim. Yeah. Number three, uh, couple, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I did have a couple questions on zoning if I could ask real quick. Um, tiny houses. I know we don't have a lot of open property within the city, but are tiny houses allowed in the city limits? Depends what you define as a tiny house. We establish a minimum size for houses, which I think is 784 square feet, sticks in my head. Okay. Um, so part of that is also, it's determined by, I think one wall has to be at least 24 feet in length. So there's some parameters that gets to that measurement. Um, so right now, not by right, and again, it depends on how you define tiny house. Okay, all right, no, that's good. And then um, the, the building um, that we talked about a little bit ago on the corner here with the new design, if I recall, there was zoning questions about his design and height and things like that. When does all of that get addressed in his proposal? Because I think we're getting close to where he was supposed to have the funding brought forward. Yep, so in October here, I think by the end of October, he has to have a letter of submission from the bank saying that he's financially qualified for a project. So that needs to be submitted. The actual design components and height and all that, our planning commission would use those. Okay. So they would first work with Steve to verify that they're meeting height requirements. Those final approval is at planning commission level. If they don't meet, Height, then they would instantly get up to Zoning Board of Appeal from Planning Commission. So they're requesting a variance. Um, so that's kind of st stage two after they submit the financial letter. If they don't submit that, then it's off. So by the end of October, we would hope to see that. Okay. Given that we so, were all really pretty unhappy with his design, do we get, do we get to see that and approve that? Nope. So he can come in and build whatever he wants to, basically. Yeah. City, so this board never gets approval of the aesthetics or any of the zoning stuff. This board only approves sale of properties, lease agreements, licensing, etc. Um, planning Commission has full authority for any of the zoning issues. So what if part of his conversation to the subcommittee that gave him the extension was because he said he was going to have underground parking for his residence. His latest design didn't have that. We approved it based on that, but we don't get any other say if he could come with no parking and it could just go through? Good. That's, again, Planning Commission. So if it doesn't come with parking, Planning Commission would have to bump it as a variance because there are parking requirements in our standards. Okay. So do we need to talk to members of the planning commission if we have concerns? You are talking to two of them right now. Three of them. Tom, yes. Bob, and myself. Okay. All right. The message heard? <laughs> you didn't even need to tell us. Okay. We you were not happy with it either, were you? No. no. Well, it felt kind of deceitful, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I yeah we had one design and then it came back and the parking was gone. Yeah, and a completely different design. Yeah, I don't think he so. He needs to any, get any off nice our try, concerns no about, about parking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Has he been meeting with you? What's that? Has he been meeting with the Planning Commission at all? Well, it's been a while. What? Two months, three months ago? It's been it? since right around that time that he came for council. Yeah. yeah. Which was almost six yeah. months ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of issues with 
Uh, that was all I had. Well, he's to trying to slide through, but it won't go through. I don't believe it will, do you? I don't think so. I'm not going to vote And even the height of it. I know I'm not voting for it. The height of it. Yeah. Currently, it wouldn't be zoning without variances. Right. So. Okay. I feel better hearing you guys <laughs> yeah, say that. Yeah, I do too, because I, I just. Well, you know we're stubborn, right? So. We <laughs> <laughs> like that about it. I just, it. yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Number, <laughs> number three on the agenda through the work session is a public comment. Again, this is open public comment. If you'd like to make any, let me know. Please use the microphone. The minutes of three minutes. Okay. Again, before we have a motion to adjourn the work session, I think each of us were bringing our own expertise to this council. We talked to different people, and we have our own. We have opinions from them. Thank you. Quick, do they have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>